Pokemon card. Seven Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 19.
You see, God is so awesome that even when we did not delight ourselves in him while we live in our old nature, uh, he still allows some blessings and some miracles to fall our way. Uh, some of us can say it's a blessing and a miracle that I'm still here. Some of us can say it's a blessing and a miracle that I'm not hooked on drugs and I'm in my right mind. Amen. Some can say it's a blessing and a miracle that I'm a single parent but I can still provide for my kids. Uh, some can say, God, I, it's a blessing and a miracle that I don't have AIDS because I did not practice chastity. Uh, some, some can say it's a blessing and a miracle that God honors the words that come from my lips when it used to be every word that came from my mouth was a cuss word. It's a blessing and a miracle he did not hold my past against me. We ought to be thankful that, 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 that God could see past our old nature and see our potential and what we could become. Uh, we ought to be thankful that God did not write us off a long time ago, but gave us chance after chance after chance while we were living and operating in our old nature. Amen. Now, in, in, in order for us to understand or, or, or in order for us to walk away from our old nature, we first must understand the characteristics of the old nature, all right? Uh, how, how, how do you know when you're operating in the old you, okay? How do you know when you're operating in, 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 in the dirty you, okay? Some of y'all may have maybe thinking that question. You may be asking yourself, I don't know. How do I know? I have some, I have some, uh, some, some examples for you. When you are operating in the old you, the enemy will hardly attack you, okay? When you're operating in the old you, the enemy has no real reason to, to mess with you because you're already doing what he wants you to do, okay? <laughs> so, so, if, so in this life, if the enemy is not attacking you, especially on a daily basis, you may need to check yourself before you wreck yourself because that may mean that you're out of line with God. Because whenever you get lined up with God, that's when the enemy is on the attack. Okay? Okay, the enemy will hardly attack you when you're operating in the old you. Uh, when, when you're operating in the old you, you can't stand to be in fellowship with other believers. When you're operating in the, in, in, in the old you, you can't stand to be around church folk because here it is, you got all this light shining on your darkness. You, you can't stand with church folk talk about the goodness of the Lord because you live in dirty and foul, you know. You can't stand to come to church, you know, oh, no, nah, I ain't got time for the church folk. Church folk act so knowing. But the, re but, the, but the real thing is you living in the old you, so, 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 so every time you get around the church folk, what you're doing is being exposed. <laughs> but you can't stand to be in fellowship when you're living in the old you. Uh, when you're living in the old you, you compromise your relationship with God for the world, okay? So instead of, of repenting, you begin to justify your sins instead of confessing them. Let me say that one more time. When you're operating in the old you, instead of, instead of repenting of your sins, you now make excuses and reasons why it is good for you to sin and keep on sinning. Uh, see, 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 I, I wrote down a few examples. Let, let, me, let me share them with you. Uh, I, I slept with her because I had needs to be met, okay? Uh, that, that's my excuse to sin, okay? Uh, I, I slept with him because he said he loved me, okay? Uh, that's my excuse, Lord. Um, uh, uh, I, I live with this person, and we don't share the same last name because I have to get used to them before we get married. Uh, I'm making it, um, uh, I, 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 I I gossip a little bit, but just a little bit. But but what I say is true, okay? What I say is accurate, okay? Uh, just, just a little bit. Of, I, 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 I only get drunk when folk get on my nerves and I had a bad day at work. I, I, I got to make some excuses. Um, I, 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 I only lie on my taxes because I have bills due, okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, I only stole from the cash register because my money was funny. Come on, somebody. We make excuses.
in, in, in essence, that what, that's what we're saying when we operate in the old us. Some of us, we were brought up in the church. I, I was, I got saved at a young age, but when I began to grow older, and I was in my, my, my teenage years, in my early 20s, you know, a lot of stuff I did, and, I, and a lot of the things that I did, but in essence, what I was telling God was, God, I don't care how you feel, because I'm going to do me, you know. I don't care how you feel, I'm going to get my drink on, you know. I don't care how you feel, God, I'm going to get my love on. Come on, somebody. I don't care how you feel, God, I'm disregarding your feeling because I got to get my party on. I really don't care. I really don't care. But see, when we operate in the old us, that's what we're saying to God. Now also, when we operate in the old us, uh, when we come to church, we, we, we act one way. Ah, oh, but by the time we leave, we're doing something else. Oh, Let me say that one more time. Oh, yeah. When we come to church and we live in the old us, the, the old you still come to church sometimes, you know. Yeah, the old you still come to church sometimes. But when we leave the church, it's like our life has transformed somewhere between the church door and the car. of the old nature, right? Further evidence of the old nature. Well, because when we look at Galatians 5, uh, 19 through 21, all right? Galatians 5, 19 through 21, it says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality. Now, when people hear the word sexual immorality, they, they only think of heterosexual activities between man and woman. But sexual immorality also goes against those who practice homosexuality, okay? So any sexual immorality you practice is wrong. I don't care if it's heterosexual because you can be a dirty heterosexual just like you can be a dirty homosexual, all right? But any sexual immorality is bad, all right? Uh, it says impurity and debauchery. Also, idolatry, when things become your God, when your house Amen. becomes your God, yes. when your car becomes your God, when your when your mate becomes your God, that's what God dislikes. Yes. And it says, and witchcraft, it says hatred. Uh, when, when you operate in the old you, you operate in the, in, in the, in the essence of hatred. Yes. You hated folk. Uh -huh. You did not like folk. You couldn't stand folk. Uh -huh. When folk said something bad or wrong to you, you hated them. Uh -huh. so when folk did you wrong, you hated them. Yes. Uh, that you 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 operated in discord. You were jealous when you worked. When you operated in the old you, you were jealous of everybody. When somebody was blessed and it wasn't you, you were jealous. Somebody got a new car, you got mad because you didn't get the new car. Uh, when somebody got a new house, you got mad because it was not you getting the new house. You were still staying in the same place. You were living in, but you were jealous. When you operated in the old you, you operated in fits of rage. The, the, the slightest thing will set you off. The slightest thing will push you over the edge and knock somebody upside the head. The, 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 the slightest thing will set you off to bust somebody in the mouth. The slightest thing will set you off to cut somebody out when you were operating in fits of rage. Uh, when you operated in the old you, you operated in selfish ambition. Everything you did in life was to get ahead for your was for, was for you to get ahead. Everything you did was to see how much money you could get. Was to see how many times you could get promoted on your job. How many cars you can buy. Everything you did was about me, me, me. Selfish ambition. Uh, it says decisions, factors, factions, and envy. Drunkenness. The old you love to get drunk. The old you love the the, 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 the sip the Ciroc, all right. The sip the E and J, all right. The, the great goose that I need to get loose. Uh, uh, the 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 the, the, the Boone's Farm, the Mad Dog 2020. Come on, somebody. Uh, the the Cavazier, the Smirnoff, the MGD, uh, the the, the L8 is 40 ounce, the Saint Eyes. Come on, somebody, y'all. So everybody up here ain't, ain't always been without drink. Come on, somebody. <laughs> But the old us used to like to sip a little bit and get drunk. Um, the, the old us participating in orgies, no. all right? I don't need to, I don't need to go into, into, into any detail about that right there. And, and, and the like it says, Miller, Jenny, I warn you, I, as I did before, those Miller, who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So as long as I operated in the old me, 
I was I was in danger of inherit not inheriting the kingdom of God. All right, now, 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 some will make excuses as well. God takes me like I am. Yeah, God takes you. He loves you. But God does not like the thing that you're doing. And, 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 and so many people, and every time I look on TV, now, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not the gay basher, yo, all right? Uh, I'm not homophobic or, uh, in, in, in any way. But, but, it, but it dumbfounds me as to how an a, a overly gay person can say, well, I'm still going to heaven just like I am. I got an issue with that. Because that means if I'm a fornicator and I still keep on fornicating, God going to let me go to heaven just like I am. Come on in the house, somebody. Now, see, one thing I realize is that the, the transition from the old you to the new you can sometimes be difficult, all right? It can sometimes be a challenge uh, because you have to break free from who you used to be, all right? You have to break free from yourself sometimes. So you have to make a conscious decision that I'm going to, I'm not going to live in my past another day, but I'm going to move toward my future to do bigger and greater things. You see, it's a dangerous thing. It, 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 it's dangerous to get comfortable in your old person, all right? Because when you get comfortable in the old you, you deny the existence of the new you, all right? Because it is the new you that God wants to come forth, all right? Oh, so, 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 like I said, it, 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 it's going to be a challenge sometimes trying to break that old habit or, or trying to, to, try to undo those things that you were doing, all right? Yeah. And see, but see, sometimes those around you make your transition hard, okay? Uh, because some of y'all, your, your friends and your family are always reminding you of what you used to do, okay? They're always bringing up your past as though you are still living in your past while you're still trying to live in the new you. You see, the, 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 the truth of the matter is some of your family and friends don't really like you because you're operating in the new you. And the reason why this is is because they cannot handle the new you. Because the new you gives them something else to talk about. You see, they, re they rejoice and they were happy to talk about the bad things that you were doing, okay? They were happy to talk about the, the how many people you slept with on a Friday night when after you first met them at the club. They were happy to talk about how much weed you smoke. But now you're coming to church. Now you're giving God glory. It gives them something else to talk about. Come on, somebody. Here it is, you. You looking better than you ever looked. I'm walking in the new you, Lord. You, you got a different kind of swag now. And, and it's making that swag look bad. Come on, somebody. They, 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 they hating on your swag for real, for real, but they don't even know how to tell you. All they can do is frown their face about you every time they see you. All they can do is gossip about you every time they see you because your swag is on a hundred thousand. Come on, somebody. Every time they see you, they, they're trying to break you down with slick and sly comments. And, and, and they fail to realize that it's, the God, it's, it's, it's God illuminating himself in you that's causing your swag to look as good as it does. Come on, somebody. Uh, but sometimes those around you will make your transition hard, all right? Uh, but, but it's a beautiful thing when you can finally take off the old you, all right? When you can finally take that old man off, you know, it's like some dead weight coming off. Come on, somebody. Myself, you know, yes, when I was operating in my old self, I thought I was doing something, you know. Yes, I, I thought I was the baddest player on the planet. Come on, somebody. Yes. I thought I was the baddest dude on, on, on the earth. But but when I came to the understanding of who God was, you know, when I came to the understanding of, of what God had for me, I realized that I had to lay the old man down and I had to do a transition, you know. I had to transform. Come on, somebody. I had to transform into the new me. Yes, sir. And, and, and notice how when you are transforming, you know, notice the color of the robe. Right? The color of the robe. Yes, notice the color of the robe. You see, when I was operating in the old me, I was dirty, nasty, funky, and filthy, all right? Yes, but, 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 but when God came into my life, he said, Corey, let me change your wardrobe. Come on, somebody. Let me change some stuff in your life. You ain't looking right, boy. Come on, somebody. <laughs> God, God, he didn't put Brooks Brothers on me. He didn't put Burberry on me. He didn't put Gucci on me. He put his grace on me. Come on, somebody. He put his love on me. Come on, somebody. That's why 
past. But for those who for those who knew me in my past, if they say Corey, you acting real brand new. You acting real bougie right now. Say so yeah, I ain't bougie, but yeah, I am brand new. Come on, somebody. <laughs>
if it had not been for him, I would not be where I am today. Everything that I look at has got to change when I begin to operate. The second point I want to make is when you become brand new, everything about you changes. Okay. Now, we look at verse 17, it says, therefore, if... If meaning you you have to make a decision as to, as to operate in the new you, okay? Amen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, and the new is here, okay? Amen. So that means when I get in Christ, when I begin to walk with him and, and have communion with him, the old things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. Those old words I used to say, I don't say them anymore. Those places I used to go, I don't go there anymore because I realize they don't satisfy me. You see, I realize that we were operating in the old us, we were looking for a certain satisfaction. We were operating in the old us, we were looking for a certain satisfaction. And notice how when you operated in the old you, you were never satisfied. You still had to get more. You still had to get more. And you had needs and satisfactions that were never met. But as soon as you came in contact with God, it seemed like everything changed. It seemed like everything you thought satisfied you out with the world. You look at it like, oh, I don't need this anymore right there. Come on, somebody. Now, when you become brand new, okay, this is my testimony. My speech is different, okay? Oh, uh, when when folk used to get on my nerves, all right, I used to cuss them out. But now, because I'm brand new, I can say, God bless them. Keep on walking. Come on, somebody. And, 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 and can, I, can I say this for, for those of you who, who are in that transition between the old and the new you? Uh, so some of you, you can say, well, uh, uh, at least I'm almost in the new me. I won't cuss them out to their face, but I turn away and think it in my mind. I'm operating in the new me. Uh, uh, I, I realize that when I when I operate in the new me, uh, some things uh, my, in my inner circle may have to change. Okay, those who I'm closest to, I may have to get rid of. Those, those who 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 around me and they don't have the same morals that I do, I may have to chuck the deuces out of them. Come on, somebody. Because some stuff has got to change because I'm operating in the new me. And now, now that I'm changed, when, when I even hear the mention of the name Jesus, something happens on the inside of me. Come on, somebody. Uh, now that I'm changed, I have developed a hunger for the word, and I can't go a day without getting it. Come on, somebody. Uh, now, now that I'm changed, I no longer set my, th my set my sight on things of the earth, but I'm looking towards heaven. Oh, uh, hey, come on in the house, somebody. Now, because I'm operating in a new man and all things have passed away, I no longer live to please myself, but I want to live to please God. Third point. God is the reason for my newness. And I could not change myself. Now, when we look at uh, clause A of chapter 18, it says, all this is from God. All of this change that, I, that I've been through or have gone through, this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So because I have been able to change, blame that on God, okay? Because I now to transition into the new me, put that on God. If you see me walk around with a smile on my face now, blame God. Right. If you see me worshiping now, blame God. If you see me praising God now, blame God. If you see me crying with my hands lifted up, giving God some glory, blame God. Because it's all because of Him that I have now been changed. It says all of this is from God. God is the reason for the change. And without God, you cannot change. You will still be in the same predicament that you've always been in unless God comes into your life, operates in the Holy Spirit to cause the change to come forth. Amen. Amen. The fourth point I want to make is, after I become brand new, I should want everybody around me to be brand new too. Okay. All right. After I become brand new, all right, I, I need everybody around me to become brand new. I need everybody on my team. I need everybody on my squad to be brand new. I need everybody in my crew. I need everybody in my gang to be brand new. Come on, somebody. 
Because when I look at clause B of 18, it says, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Meaning how I live, I should cause others who want to live a life of reconciliation. Meaning how I live, I should, I should be able to draw others unto God because of my lifestyle. Okay, Because my lifestyle has changed. Other folks will say, you know what? I, I want to serve the God that you serve. I, I want to read the word that you read. That you, that you read. I, I want to worship the same God that you worship. Or, you see, 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 just like when we buy a brand new car, right? Just like when we go out and buy a brand new car, other folks want a brand new car too. Now, if I'm living a brand new lifestyle, other folks around.